The first fanfare we actually had, and EverQuest was on fire, and we had it, and I walked in and I saw a bunch of jesters and a bunch of wizards, and, and to me that was all, I couldn't believe that people were dressing up, families all dressed up together as, as jesters or wizards or whatever it was, little dwarves, and uh, I was pretty shocked. It was really magical because you were having people from all different kind of walks of life, people that would never interact with each other, and they show up to these fanfares, they're long lost friends because they've been playing online forever. And you, you meet each other, and it's just the most, you know, it's, the, it's a collection of odd couples. We are here in NORAD. Real, real life, NORAD. It, it, it's a park. NORAD does not have water fountains. We've managed to find some of the biggest EverQuest players that there are. And here they are. Uh, my name is Ryan. My character's name is the Apprentice Fisherman, T-Nexus, the Rift Walker of the Plains, Scoundrel of the Oathbreakers. Do they actually let you put that much text in for your name? Yeah, I think I'm actually pretty much at the cap for my name because I couldn't get another word in. Go Wood Elves, by the way. Uh, when I go on EverQuest, I play Lil Brain. He's an ogre berserker, level 85. Uh, I do some raiding, some grouping. And he's pretty much a big idiot, but he gets the job done. If you need something killed, you say, Lil Brain, finish this guy off, and he kills it. What would you say Lil Brain's biggest accomplishment in EverQuest was? Epic 1.0. He has no idea what that is. He doesn't know yeah. what it is. No, what is that? <laughs> Jace does not know what Epic 1.0 is. <laughs> Everyone knows it's the week's long quest through the trial of blood, mirages, strategy, fervid rage, hunting, and mastery to obtain the epic weapon, the Corazian Axe of Fire! history from there off we were off and running with the game it just was a an absolute monster hit that we had to mature up and actually build a business out of it and figure out how to sustain it because again we had built this thing uh, you know kind of under the radar and now we had hundreds of thousands of users in there and uh, it was never architected for that so would you say that they effectively forged what are the today's business models for how you're making money in an MMO I think that what happened was EverQuest made its own history. Well, they picked a way of letting customers play their games. And they took it and they ran with it and they made it work. It's the same model that people are still using today. That We're here. Greg Short. Greg, Greg Short. And he's from Costa's Realm. And that's you, it's basically like the number one EverQuest fan site. I would say. So I started playing it and rapidly realized that there was no manual. There was no tutorial there was no you know you started the game in a dark cave that you had to find your way out of a maze to find the first thing to kill I mean I had a great starting experience my first time in EQ I was a uh, halfling so I started in Rivervale uh, fell in to the lake in Rivervale died to Chomper spawned back in Misty Thicket had no idea where I was ran around for like two hours and thought it was the greatest thing ever. Now how long did you play EverQuest for? Like how many, over the, how many years did you? Four plus years, five years. Do you think you would be here at Blizzard had EverQuest not existed at all? No, I don't think so. EverQuest fact number 143. Over 12 million characters have been created by players in EverQuest. Ooh, kind of hot. <laughs> You know, that to me was the power of it for me, was that I could hang around people and who I was and what I did was insignificant. Right. And that was a big deal for me. MySpace and Facebook and all the social networking things, I think, are a result of everybody understanding how powerful that whole social piece was. At some point, you have to review the game. Now, yeah. did you guys do that immediately after it launched, or did you give it like six months? But I think what we didn't understand then, that we later learned in future MMOs, is that writing review of a game like this early it's like reviewing a movie after the first 10 minutes there's so much later this is an important point yeah because these games never end right they never end um, i guess that's why it's called ever quest ever quest because you're questing forever yeah i think ever quest has gotten um into the psyche of a lot of people that are making mmos today and you'll find that a lot of the blizzard guys played everquest 
fanatically. You heard the Blizzard guys, I think it was Diablo 2 or one of the Diablos was a little late because of EverQuest. And there was a ton of us here at Blizzard that were playing. I mean, you know, we'd go to a new server and, you know, we'd plan out on a whiteboard, you know, who was, who was going to be what in the new guild. EverQuest was like one of the last of the generation of games where chances are if you played it you probably didn't know a hundred people in your real life who played it right. so you would go online and you'd make friends the characters that you guys play in the game but do they make use of magic at all no we use magic sometimes we uh, use our weapons sometimes we just blow things up with magic is it did you have did you have just one character that, that's a magic user or do you have a bunch of characters that actually use magic i just have one I, I you say, say one, one magician i'm, I'm the, the one, one magician. magician wait the cat is telling me there's a battle. I don't mean to be rude, but I must disappear. Is that a teleportation spell? If he's just level two, then yeah, he, he won't. Yeah. I don't know, he might have been like level three. Mm. He's pushing it. EverQuest fact number 532, there are over 15,000 quests and 21,000 spells in EverQuest. Did that guy have a cat on his shoulder? He did, didn't he? It was about a month after we released we put out a note to the fans in the patcher that said, hey, we're going to be at Carl Strauss Brewery at 6 o'clock tonight. Stop by if you'd like to. And 100 people showed up. Jim Lee showed up there. From uh, DC we, Comics. He was just a fan. Yes, Med, I'm just a fan. Just this idea that you could put a note up on an online game and 100 people show up to have beer with you. I mean, it was a blast. Me and the guys were getting ready to roll out for lunch come out of the door and uh, you've got four or five people that are standing there asking you like, hey, are you, are you, are you Brad McQuaid? Are you John Smedley? Because we want to get a picture with you. We drove here from Texas. You know, we, we're trying to track down these people. And, you know, there were definitely some situations where it was really flattering to the people that were involved with it. What shows through more than anything in, with the fans is the fact that we, we interact with them in the first place. Because if you think about it, you don't get to interact with uh, you know, movie directors. Maybe I don't get to send an email out and you know to uh, Sam Raimi and give him my suggestions for you know the next Spider-Man movie. You know, my understanding is you actually get into this game and actually interface and talk to these people directly. Is we that, do. Is, is that how you do it? These games are all about community. They're all about socializing. They're all about meeting each other. Yeah, you kill monsters and slay dragons and earn treasure, but in the end, it's about making friends and relationships. Hey, hey, hey! We're, we're filming in here. You'll be in the game like this, and you'll actually be one-on-one -on -one helping people. Uh, sometimes. A lot of the, what, the interaction we do is uh, chatting with them, not so much helping, but we do answer questions about where they can go or where they can get help. Wow, game just crashed. A kid being in, in the hospital on, uh, with something wrong with him, unable to run, you know, but we, we got a letter once where he's like, he was, you know, saying, thank you so much, I can run, and run inside of EverQuest. So stuff like that would really touch the hearts of people. People who have some disabilities, who feel like they're productive members in our world where they have no limitations. They can run around and slay monsters and participate. When I moved out here from Australia, I slept on the couch of a bunch of people that were in my guild. Uh, my wife helped deliver the baby of a friend that I met in EverQuest. So, so you're basically saying that the creation of this game literally altered the entire course of your life. Absolutely. This changed your life, really. It was really a request that spurred us to the idea more than anything. I get stories all the time of players who met in our game and are now together. It doesn't matter who you love, it's do you love. It's a very great honor and privilege to pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> That's awesome.